Welcome back to 380. This week we're going to be talking about or doing a lecture here uh, on how to uh, model shafts uh, and we're going to be focusing on how the standardization of parts kind of drives the whole thing. We're going to be using two things, uh, the McMaster car catalog and Orlov uh, which is shown right here. I'm in volume four here, the brown one, around page 14, 15 to start. Cast your mind back to the, uh, at the very beginning, uh, we were uh, looking at the keys. Keys are driven, or at least the breadth and height is driven by the shaft diameter only. The length is driven by those formulas. Uh, for this, we're going to make a, a an assumption for the length, uh, which we won't. We don't. We're not going to get into the torque flow going through our sprocket, which we're going to place here. But we will be using these key lengths, uh, which are limit uh, from a preferred number list. Uh, and keep in mind that we're hoping to make this uh, happy realization that these are standardized still the same. Right? This is an old Soviet standard. Uh, it's still the same, still DIN, still metric uh, standard uh, keys. And interestingly, last thing before we move away here and get started, uh, notice the small gap above the key, which is for that sort of two parts, two touches rule. We don't want it too tight. So it shouldn't be touching top and bottom. We will be modeling that uh, to some detail uh, here shortly. Uh, just a warning, today we're going to be modeling uh, fairly uh, detailed. Uh, this may not be the detail you always model to, uh, often depending on where you work, uh, the detail is left up to either the machinist or the detailer downstream. Uh, but for once, we're just going to go through, at least for this week, we're going to go through ultra detailing. Uh, again, a feel for what kind of parameters we're going to be struggling with in reality uh, as we graduate. So I've saved this file already. It's just in a spot where I want it to be. I'm calling it a stub shaft, meaning uh, for me anyway right now that it's just a portion of a shaft uh, similar to these diagrams at Orlov. So let's go ahead here and get started. Um, I've done some practice runs. Let's just actually have a quick look just even at the icon. We're going to have the thicker part of the shaft pointing towards us here, the negative Y, the sprocket towards the back with a key and some sort of retaining ring. So that's the plan. So let's just move back up and then we can close that down. So let's start by doing our sketch. Before I start sketching, let's put it into its own component. So let's call this, for example, shaft. Uh, because there's no part number and I'm doing this, I tend to at least start with an underscore just to differentiate from McMaster car or, or other placed parts. Say, okay, if you want it to be active, it'll start up active. If I turn that off, you can see the history starting up and then I can activate it if I wish. Nothing in here so far. So let's do a sketch. Uh, just to be safe, I don't know which of the, I might not be sure which one of these is being picked. So I want the ZY or YZ in my component here. So if the component moves, I want the sketch to go with it. Easy. I want the larger side of the shaft to be pointing in the negative Y. So let's do it like so for now. And we'll start immediately putting a little bit of logic on here. Let's have that in there. <laughs> and we're also going to make that a center line because we're going to do a revolve here. Doesn't break our profile. Nice. This is the larger end. I could draw another rectangle from this corner. It's, fusion is fine with that, but for clarity, I tend to just use two uh, edges of my own. Don't lock to the midpoint. If it's too close, just kind of stick it on and then put a horizontal. If you want, for example, I find these strange, you can delete those guys and replace it with your own. Horizontal, vertical, not perpendicular, personal preference. 
let's get our prototype working. So we'll finish our sketch and we'll create our first body here. Notice we can now already pick the step. Axis and new body, everything's fine. And we can see here that we've got our shaft component with the body in it. Let's go up to the top level. Uh, it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be quite uh, common. You'll notice I just pressed three. I need to go back to one window selection. Uh, we do want to be able to see inside this uh, part from our assembly from time to time. So let's go for a section analysis through the middle. Toggle that on and off at our leisure. Got a undefined sketch here. Let's call it something. So when we're in the cut and thrust of all this, we know what it is. So shaft profile. Perfect. And that looks fine for now. That's not what we need, but there it is. 20 millimeters is what I'm after. So let's actually start that while we're at it. Sorry. Let's uh, edit the sketch. Put a diameter down since we know that's what we want. It'll scale the whole sketch accordingly. We now have one defined edge. So we should find that this is now, of course, radius 10, diameter 20. Perfect. Let's go, let's keep everything organized here. Let's go make sure we're at the top and place on a sprocket. So in the massacre, sprocket. And start filtering right away, just make this a little bigger. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, okay, resize that. Uh, I want to be metric. Uh, so there should be a metric in here. I want 17 teeth. Now, Let's have a look at what's going on here. Now we're going to be a little bit picky. We've got an OD and all that stuff. We've got hub diameter. And you see that this hub is bigger than the sprocket, of course. It's it, overall width is wider than the sprocket width. So, which is interesting. Uh, why? Well, it's so, so we have room for a key if we need it. Notice that it's, uh, it says here, um, there is a, they have a machine shaft diameter, but there, there is a hole there, uh, but they are machinable up to a maximum shaft diameter size. So these are quite commonly machined, even when you get them with a hole in them. Uh, so this implies that the material is machinable uh, easily and all that sort of fun. Uh, but what we're here looking for is, this is the, this looks like maybe the, the shaft diameter it comes with, and then, uh, upper limit on the machining that we were allowed to do. What's going on here? Let's have a look at Orlov, strangely. The, what they're really saying here is the hub can't be too thinned out by the key. Turns out there's a chart on page 24 that ex exemplifies this. We've got here minimum values of D hub versus D it's right here. Well, D hub. D hub is that maximum diameter of the hub. D is the shaft diameter. So what's our shaft diameter? 20. So a close look here. So we're at 20 here. Climb up. And we can see 1.5. What is that? D hub over D. So if we need 1.5 ratio, let's go to P calc here. I'll just uh, drop all this stuff. Um, we've got 20. And that means we need at least 30 of our on our hub. Let's check that again. So 20, 1.5, that's the ratio. And that's for steel, that looks good. First, it's not cast iron, it's steel. Let's have a look at McMaster car, make sure it's steel. Steel, so 1.5. So we need a hub diameter 
we can see here all of a sudden we see maximum shaft diameter, shaft diameter, which is what it comes with. OD, that's not important for us. So say we're going to go for this first roller, our metric roller chain. Uh, we need 17 teeth, which we've picked. And I need at least... The hub diameter, there it is, to be 30 at least. Now we've got one here at 30, exactly, borderline. Let's go for this larger one. And you'll notice what it's doing is it's picking the pitch for us. Uh, in the following weeks, we're gonna do chains. We'll understand what this means. But here we have a 20 millimeter to be safe. We're gonna go up to make the pitch because it's exactly right on the limit. So of course there's a bit of safety factor built into that, but let's go for this. Let's have a look here, uh, product detail. It's machinable to 25, that's safe. 28 long, 40 millimeters in diameter. That looks fine. Uh, just to be safe here, I'm gonna take a little screenshot-ish of this thing. Let's get that bigger again. So it doesn't tell as much, but I'm just using a shortcut on the Mac here to screenshot that. Oh, escape a bit. I need that part number. There it is. And I'm also going to get some of this data here, just in case. Uh, don't forget to download it. So now that we've got it, we're happy. Let's download. Sometimes this doesn't work up if I've been fiddling around. There it is. Uh, let's see. We're going to have the teeth pointing to the right. So let's rotate this while we can. Notice it's already not happy. <laughs> it's not on the origin. And it might make us capture position. We'll try and not do that, but let's try it. Uh, that's not right. The shaft is centered. The sprocket is not. Let's hide the shaft. I'm going to turn off my analysis and do a move M. Move the component point to point, point to position. Point to point is usually easier. Origin point and our target. So we're looking for an origin here. Where's our, where do we want? to be target to, and you can actually go in here and pick uh, where things are. Let's see where the origin is on this. The origin is in the middle-ish. Oh, it looks like uh, it's on the center of the sprockets. I want the, not that origin, but the main origin to be aligned. So I'm gonna pick the target point as the origin. Oh, we missed our component. Come on. <laughs> it's not it's not happy. Let's try again. Move. Click too many things there. Component first. Point to point. Origin point. Let's go for that center. And then target point, the main origin. There we go. It might make his capture position. Let's see how she goes. Not bad, not bad. The problem is now our sketch for the shaft is before that placement. Maybe, let's see if I can get that to spin up. The, our order's kind of un correct, incorrect. So let's try pulling that back. Uh, see what happens, it loses its orientation. Let's try doing a uh, over here. Sorry. Position, of course. Try and drag it. If we pull this out. So there's all these dilemmas here. Sorry. 
Let's try dragging it around. Let's do a move again. Now, if we do the move where we are, it's going to jump around. So this is not a bad thing to go into here. You can see here we've got the chain sprocket placed. Depend it doesn't really matter this early. Let's do a move. Move component. Let's begin with a rotation. There we go. Then let's go for a point to point. And let's capture the position to get this all sorted out. There we go. Now it's also draggable. So while we're at it, ground it. A whole bunch of stuff to get that part placed. Yeah, it's not bad though. There it is. And now if we go to the end of our history, we have the shaft, correct? Nice. So that all looks good. Now before we do all this, let's go ahead here and size this is if we're getting this machined. So let's uh, go all the way back to just after the grounding and press pull that. Automatic should give us uh, just a modification of the part of the, the original and it shows us the radius right now. So let's just change the radius to 10. Doesn't shift anything in the history, which is great. So that's good, but bad, because then we don't know how it showed up. So we have to be a little careful with that, put some comments on. Now let's have a look at our history at the end and turn on the shaft feature. And let's have a look at our analysis. Looks okay. Let's have the shaft shape sketch visible start dragging it around a bit to get into position try and grab that corner drag this out a bit not sure where we're going to go here it doesn't have to be huge we're a bit long right now and we're definitely on the wrong side of the part there we go it's looking fine So let's go ahead here and start locking the shaft onto the sprocket. Adjust the sketch. Now the easy way to do this, of course, is to st go ahead and start projecting parts or, or from the place part into the new sketch, into the shaft sketch. So let's go ahead here and do an intersect. This will find where some geometry intersects the sketch probably interested in those two ends. For now, it's not bad. Let's do that for now, say okay. Now, this is gonna be a little fiddly, but what I want to do here is drive the shaft by the part. So I'm actually gonna delete that dimension pull it away to see what I'm getting and use the coincident constraint to lock things into place. Now, we might be, I'm gonna add a chamfer to this later, like it has up here. Uh, it's not unreasonable to ask for that. Um, makes the shaft uh, assembly easier. It's also, causes problems if because we've projected these and we're going to go through this on purpose but because we projected this curve when we chamfer this the curve gets lost you're going to have to come back here and fix the sketch so i know what's coming so don't lock this corner to this projection that'll make it harder to fix later instead you want to always go with the two touches two uh parts thing so instead i want to use these kind of midpoint uh, uh, coincident relationships constraints. So instead of going to right to the corner, which is two for one, I want to actually be quite inefficient here. Start using it, uh, look into the future. Dimensioning, to dimension this, this is arbitrary, 10. So this is just the end of our little stuck shaft. Right now we don't know what's going on out here. We're gonna add a ring groove later. So for now we don't know. Just drag that into place. 
and we don't know the diameter of this shoulder yet either. It doesn't need to be enormous, but it does need to be over whatever chamfer we put in there. Finish the sketch. Nice, it's good. Getting there. Obviously, and we're gonna have a problem here. We can't have a perfect corner. We're gonna to have to chamfer this and the machining is gonna bring in a fillet. So let's go ahead here and start fixing this guy. Uh, I'm gonna use the history quite a bit here. So I'm gonna pull the history back so that we're at this position here. And then I'm gonna do some work within the component chamfer. Let's pick the whole phase, go for something like 0.5 or one, 0.5, say okay. One thing we can also do is try and measure this. So let's just say okay and then see what size this guy is. So from there to there, half a millimeter. Let's use that. So that's what we used. So that's good. So we've got half a millimeter. Just let's check. 0.5. Perfect. Go back up to the top level. Swing by to the end. Uh, we have a warning. I know what just happened. You can see here as well, the projections have turned yellow, which means warning, like a yellow uh, merge. Edit the sketch or more interestingly, manage lost projections. What it does is starts the sketch up again, but we get this new dialog. Click the first one. It highlights which one it is. We've got some options here. You can open this up if you want. Delete them all, break the link, all that sort of stuff, which is just basically get rid of them all. I don't want to get rid of stuff. I want to relink. Remember that we that we used the coincident constraint on this edge. So what I want to do is give it a new piece of, piece of geometry to follow. And I want something that's already on the edge. Perfect. Same again. This one is on the edge that I want. So let's go ahead and relink this one to the one that's already the edge of the chamfer that's in the right spot. Perfect. Sketch is fixed, nothing moved, no sea of red, happy as pie. Next, let's get that key in there. Fortunately, there's no key slot, so on and so forth. Uh, obviously, we're gonna put a key slot into both uh, the shaft and the hub, so our hub. So let's go ahead here and check the McMaster car. Now, I've also looked up, we have it showing here, uh, some uh, modern, like Din Chegg. <laughs> uh, this is really small, Let's see here, but we've got the shaft diameter here from tw <laughs> 17 to 22, six by six, ah, perfect. And all the way over here to 60.16 and 0.25, is that matching our Orlov? Let's go back up here and look at those guys. Same size, 17 to 22, six by six, three and a half, so on and so forth, and 0.16 and 0.25. This is exactly the same, nice. So standardizing uh, is our friend. We're always gonna have that. So perfect, we need a six by six. Now how long, this is back to our love. Uh, oh, we need to use these. So how wide is this guy? Let's have a look. Uh, 28. So 28, 28, 28 on the dot, it's a bit tight. Like you don't want to go in right over to the end of the hub because the end of the hub is up against the shoulder. We need at least two millimeters or so here. We might be putting fillets on here and all that stuff. You can't run a mill right into the shoulder perfectly, right? It's going to wreck, it's going to bend it and all that stuff. So we want a gap, say two millimeters of this size. So our, what was our width? Forgot already. Call it 28. So 28 is no good. 25. Maybe 22 would give us, if we centered it three millimeters at each end, maybe that's what we should try. 22 or 25. Let's see what Mac Master has. 
So now let's get our key here. Keys. Before we forget. Six by six, 22 or 25 long. So let's go for rounded machine keys. Metric, six. And they have, oh, shocker, both. Let's go for, like oh, you're rendering right now, well, which one's safer? The 22 is gonna be a little weaker, uh, and probably a little safer on the shaft. So let's go for 22, if in doubt. Notice it's undersized. It will come through though as a, a sort of a exact value. Like the tolerances here are ultra tight. Ask for steel, overall length, still available, 22. There we go, one option. Let's have a look. And this, <laughs> there it is on your finger. Uh, six by six, 22 long. Let's use that. There it is. Now, we're gonna be using some fiddly stuff here, but I'm gonna, gonna try just rotating it into kind of position first. And if we want, we can capture position. It might jump around a bit. We'll say, okay. One of the big problems is positioning this key correctly. Uh, I need to use a joint. Um, one of the more convoluted things that Fusion does is jointing. It's very good at it, uh, but because it's so good at it, it needs a bit of sort of, uh, what should we say, attention, some uh, hesitation, some uh, care is the word. So we're going to use a thing called a joint origin, uh, which is going to place our, uh, keep our joints nicely aligned. First, we'll do it the wrong way. We'll see the problem and we'll try and fix it up. So here's the wrong way first. So I want, I'm most interested in arranging this correctly with the hub. So let's just hide the shaft. I'm going to hide what origin is this. So click it once that origin. Don't know why it's running. There's another one in here. Somebody's origin is visible. No. Nope. Strange. Let's keep an eye on that origin. Where is that? Ah. <laughs> Strange. Uh, I might be running into problems here. I've got uh, update waiting. I'm trying to do this all without uh, updating. See how it goes. One of the things we can do with joints is just place this guy. So I'm going to try placing it. First, the unconstraint, this guy, maybe the bottom face. And then what do I want it for? Let's put it in the middle of this hub. And you'll notice it rotates around. There's no easy way to fix this. So this is not really kind of working for us, we'd have to do some rotations and all some fiddling and all the rest. So before we do that, the way to make this easier on ourselves is actually to create joint joint origins. It's under assemble, I believe, joint origins. And it tells the system where it wants a joint to be. Now you can make multiple joint origins. We're gonna put one on each component. So let's do our roller chain sprocket first. So that's green. Pull myself back in history to here and I'll put it right in here. So we're gonna make this, get this one sorted first. Where is the key gonna go? So first, uh, oh, make sure it's active. There we go. Uh, if I do it inside the component, it will move with it. It's best origin mode. There's lots of different ways to do this. What I'm going to do though first is pick its origin. Actually, I'm going to, no, I'm going to use the origin. Mm -hmm. Got to break my own advice here. I'm going to go and put it at the origin first. Uh, the reason for this is I can now pick uh, distance because I know it's 14 to the middle here. 28. Um, I can also reorient this guy. 
So for example, if I look at this, I can pick directions. So you'll notice the little joint origin, it doesn't magnify. Moving around when we pick directions. So let's put it, try and get it arranged similar to the view cube here. Let's try that, say okay. No, don't say okay, move it after this. So we're gonna go back minus 14 and we're gonna go up 10. It puts it right on that surface right at the top, right where we want our key to be, say okay. Should work, we're not gonna move anything. Uh, if we move this component, we might run into problems. Uh, you can edit these. So if you look inside of your uh, part, you'll see joint origins showing up here. I uh, popped out to the top level because I picked the outside, the overall origin. Don't worry too much about that. However, on this one, the key, we want to be more exact because that's moving. So let's go up to the top level and to the end. There's our key, edit the key. Let's put a joint origin to it. So we can leave it as is. Uh, we can also rotate this around. Let's leave it as is and see if we can get it to do what we want. So here's our start point. We can see the origin for this is nicely right in the middle. So let's put another joint origin in here. Now we want it to be for 90 degrees. I'm picking this bottom face here to flip it. You can see what happens if I do this again. Pick in this face, stay okay. Now let's try doing a joint. Just J shortcut. not bad, we can flip that, nice, it's good, perfect, and it's all nicely aligned to say okay. It's quite good work, doing well. Let's just leave that there for now, now we're going to do some work on the tidying that up, the shaft is also available. Next we have to hold this axially, it needs a ring. Uh, there's a lot of Orlovian uh, ring stuff, but the ring is controlled completely by the shaft diameter. Let's just place the ring. Metric. Shown as this. We've got tiny stuff. We're at 20. Uh, there's more stuff going on here. What's happening? We want external. Standard. As things get started, it gets uh, closed down a bit here. Here we go. That's more like it. So 20 is what we're after. Exactly. And we don't need heavy GT. These are usually uh, like a sprocket's usually not massively side loaded. You can see these are quite cheap. 50 for 14 US. Let's go for the zinc coated. Let's have a look at it. Uh, I used this before, but I'm just going to make sure everything looks kosher here. Get some screenshots. So there's our part. And importantly, this is the stuff we need here. So let's also get that. While we're at it, what's going on with this clearance? If this is the this faint line here, faint uh, center line looking thing, uh, that's how much need space you need to be able to open it and get it over the 20 millimeter shaft. Uh, so it's 28 when you're absolute minimum uh, to get it over. 
so once it's snapped in, it goes down to 27, still quite big. Notice also that the size of the inner size of this is not 20 uh, or 18 or 19. So what it's saying here is the groove is 19 in diameter, but the, in, the ID of the ring groove is actually 18 and a half. So we're going to have an overlap in our assembly. This is perfectly fine. Uh, so this is our first sort of encounter with overlapping assemblies because uh, this is modeled in its shipped state, so not stretched. So just keep that in mind. We're going to download that guy. And we have those screenshots if we need them. Where is it? Let's see here. It's not bad. Let's just go with that. Got a bunch of stuff going on. I put it inside the key. Nice. Let's get that part number because I'm going to replace it. There's a way to just drag it, but it makes the makes the uh, history a bit messy. So I'm just going to undo my place, go back to the top level, and place again because I saved that part file part number. We can just download it again. There it is, correct. Nice. Uh, right now it's in a strange orientation, but we don't care. We're going to use a joint to position and say, okay, joint. Uh, anything that will align us, I want it pushed up against this face. That's facing the wrong way. It's not bad. You'll notice that we have a gap here at the top, so you can see the edge of it here. Say OK. Let's make sure it's actually centered. Hide the shaft. Use the inspection tool. I center position X Y Z zero zero zero. Perfect. So it is centered. So we look down the hole from the small side of the sprocket. See that. Correctly aligned. Looks good. Show the shaft. Need to put a groove here for this. Edit the sketch. And we lose our key here. It's fine. Because uh, we're just going to go ahead here. I'm going a little bit off screen. There we go. So that's what we're after. So we've got, you, know, you can call it, I'm in the Mac here, so I can copy paste this if I want, but it's 19 diameter. So I'll just copy that. So we have to put this in. Now the question is, how do we get this sorted out here? So one thing we can do is actually move the shaft out quite a bit because uh, we would like to be able to see this key I mean ring so let's let it rebuild here there's our shaft it's only two features really so we can actually grab and drag oh. can we come up we'd have to drag it the other way uh, sorry, what's the problem? Of course, because I've, my sketch is referencing other parts. So another thing is we could do is just move the ring around. So let's try and see how far we can get with that. No. Oh man, how do we do this? So I can just measure the length of this guy. It's 1.2. If we want to copy that, we can get that 1.2. It's not great, I admit. So one other way to do this, actually figure out, maybe we should put this in right at the start. So let's undo. Seems crazy, but in a nice way, it's, it's the way to go. So we can pull this all the way back to our, it's right there, nice. What is that? Make the shaft. Right, that's why we can't pull it back. 
So let's start there. Place again. Oh, I lost it. Uh, let's see. Mm, power files missing. There it is. Uh, in the preview, it'll let me copy as well. Not too far out there. There it is. Download. It's not bad to do all this, I have to say. Joint. Doing it the other way this time. Mm. Another way to do this. You can also rotate it around. Nice. Let's just make sure that we're positioned correctly. Zero, zero, zero. It's tempting to just say, oh, it looks fine, but always be careful. Pull the history all the way back out. No, that's a lot of fiddling. But now we can now, now we can, now we can do this with the thing showing perfect. Let's do a intersect after all that. That's one way. Another way is to just do a proje uh, projection this time, which is shortcut P. So it's entirely up to you. Um, I like intersect. It's a tidier sketch. So I'll just go for those two guys. Now it won't show up at the top because it doesn't touch the sketch. It's only where it intersects, so it's only at the bottom. Nice, let's hide that guy. You can actually hide the sprocket as well if we want. Need to use these for something. Let's draw a line between them. And with the line tool again, draw a nice big, Sort of partial rectangle. And then connect those two guys together. I can change this to construction with an X. And that to an X. What's the point of all this? I want to center this size here uh, on the ring so that there's a nice uh, tolerance on both sides. So I want to center the ring in the groove essentially. So using this approach, I can get this to show me the right, correct behavior. Again, using constraints, coincident and coincident. Nice. This is the groove width 1.3. Diameter, like we've talked about before. Finish the sketch. It won't change the shaft until we manually go in here. So let's edit the feature. And it, I don't have to press shift or anything, just de remove that part from the revolve. Show the retaining ring and the hub. Notice down here, it is overlapping, right? Because this is in its pre-stretched shipped state. So when it's stretched over, uh, it'll obviously match the diameter more or less. Uh, let's say more or less uh, once it's done. This looks good, right? We're doing well here in our ultra long track of a video. Now, let's just finish off this sketch. I need a chamfer. And a little kind of guess at, at, at the spacing. So let's go for the chamfer first. Oh, dimension. 45. This can be hard to pick sometimes. 
So if you're having trouble, just click somewhere in the vicinity, click and hold, sketch point to edge of hole. This is hard to measure, right? And also strange. Um, it might be, it might make more sense to measure from the end of the shaft or from the shoulder. It's up to you. Uh, it's probably bad form to go to the hole or the groove, sorry, yeah, for the ring. So let's leave the ring independent and we'll dimension from, for example, the shoulder. Let's go for 30. And again, we can, from the shoulder, so we can say this measurement plus one. We're left with just this, the shoulder at the back. So we're almost fully defined here. So how do we pick that? Well, preferred numbers and all this stuff. One one approach to doing this is actually to use the like MasterCard bearing table <laughs> of all things. Um, it is a kind of a uh, preferred number list. If we go into ball bearings, go into metric, uh, this is a, a fast uh, approximation of the shoulder, the next available shoulder, 20 to 25. Let's put it at 25 for now. So I'll just close that diameter. There we go. Fully defined, nice. So the shaft is now almost done. Just have to get, oh, oh, I've lost some. Oh, nice. Not a base feature. Why am I doing a base feature? Edit feature. There we go. Strange. Oh, it's the, sorry. I got the inside surface of the sprocket. There we go. Don't do a base feature. There we go. Perfect. Now let's get focused in on this keyway and key slot. So we've got this stuff going on. One of the easy ways to get this begun is actually just use the combine tool and use the key to dig out the two parts. So let's start with that. Target body is where you want to cut. Let's do the shaft first. Tool body is the key. Let's keep the tool and a cut. So when we hide the tool, where we are here, the rounded, we've got a hole. Nice, let's do the same for the hub. So right click, repeat, combine. That's our tool body. Sorry, that's our target tool, keep. Okay. Nice. But not quite right. Let's look at our love. We're on the six by six. Shaft T, what's the top? 3.5. And we've got 2.8. So our T here is 3.5. It's up. So we've got a problem here. So we should be seeing, we've got three right now. And you think, oh, hold on here, what's going on? Three and a half plus 2.8, so 3.5 plus 2.8, 6.3 altogether. So there's something going on here. We might have to move that key. So let's figure that out. Now, maybe we can move the joint origin. So basically, what do we have here? T for this size is 3.5, not three. So that means that we need to move the key down a half millimeter. Let's do that. So let's look for that joint origin. That's the rounded machine key. That's in the stub shaft. So we've got offset, so let's move that down. 
No, I'll just leave the 10 and see, minus 0.5. Now we should be seeing, if we measure this correctly, did we do that right? Let's get rid of the sketch here. From there to say that point right there, 6.5, hold on here. Three and a half. Uh, I'm using the component one, uh, its own component for the coordinate system. So we're moving Z, 3.5, that is correct. Now the next problem is that overall, we needed uh, 3.5 plus 2.8, 6.3. What's our dimension here? Six, so we need to move it up 0.3. So let's do that. Let's go in here, the greenie. And the last thing we did here was that union. So now let's move that. Press pull. I want a new offset here, otherwise it'll adjust everything to suit. It'll actually make the key thicker. So I want to go with minus 0.3 because uh, that's in the negative direction from the original whole view offset. We get a feature here, which we can't do without, but if we show the thing that we've got that gap, nice. So we've got the proper gap set correctly in the shaft and the hub. Everyone's looking good, except that we've got some touching issues here. I think this is impossible. And I also want to make this a run out keyway, meaning it goes right out the end of the shaft. Let's look at our off again. So I actually want this arrangement. So I want the, the keyway to go right out the end of the shaft. I also want it to go right through the hub. It's not, not doing either right now. Now, I tend to draw, uh, put in a sketch here that does it all at once. Um, it's a little fiddly. Uh, a little strange and it's a little late in the game on the history but it's well worth it I suppose. In the main uh, part here, we're looking good. So in the main part here, so up at the top level, I can high joint origins for example. And the other one is in the shaft. No, in the key. So we've got an origin here, hide that guy. Here we go. We can also hide joints if we wish. There it is. And we might have some joints also in the key or the shaft. No, no, that did them all. Sorry. There we go. Tidy. We're late here, but it's going to be a bit of a mess, this history. Let's put it in the main part. Uh, we can turn off our analysis and just slice. So let's do some projecting work here. Mostly interested in this key and its surrounding geometry. So actually, let's hide the key. Let's project some intersections. So again, my favorite. Uh, S intersect. Get both of these. And this guy as well. Say okay. I can hide these if I want to get it, tidy things up. So rectangle. Again, using the same approach as last time. I'm going to put them onto the Make sure that looks good. What length is that? 6.3, nice. So if we look at our key, it's slightly smaller, perfect. So that's good. Now, what about, let's have a look at say the shaft. Uh, we do need to stop here, but on the hub, I need to cut it all the way across. So now let's do uh, intersect out there. 
let's get that guy. And the shaft is going to want to go right past the ring. So let's see, wait for the shaft for that. Let's say okay to that. Kind okay, of reverse what's showing. Let's do another intersect. And get the shaft length. Nice. The other thing we're going to be interested in is not cutting this end off here, this rounded part. That's going to be the the socket that the, in a way that the key sticks into. So again, let's do a project here now and find out where that start of cut has to be. We'll need a new line for that. So let's do that first. Perpendicular, it's locked up, nice. We need a coincident for this line and that end. That was, that's the end of the hub. And we also need one at the end of the shaft. We'll call this the, oh, if it'll let us finish the sketch, rename this here, uh, key cuts, maybe lateral. Nice, let's cut the shaft first. So we're gonna go for an extrude. I only want to cut away the front of the shaft. So this main part here, two sides, up to objects, both ways. So for the first one, let's go out to the end of the key uh, slot or the width of the key slot and the other one, the same. Oh, we're cutting the key, uh, the ring. That's no good. So let's go down here. Make sure we don't cut the key. It'll show you a preview so we can make sure we're getting the right one. Nice, let's say okay. Perfect, do the hub. Uh, I might hide that sketch, turn back on. Hub time, uh, maybe with analysis turned on this time. And the sub analysis turned on, there it is. Shaft's looking good. Now we have to cut the entirety of the hub. I'm gonna turn the analysis off actually. Another extrude E, both profiles. Again, one other way to make sure it doesn't cut the ring is just to actually hide the ring. Two sides, two objects again. And like the uh, shaft, I'm using the outside edges of the Strange, it's not happy with that. Did we pick the wrong one? There we go. Make sure it's only cutting one thing. There we go. Nice. Hide that sketch. Turn everything on. Check the analysis. Right now we've got the ears of the ring over the key, uh, group, other key wing of the hub, not a bad thing. Uh, let's just get the pliers through maybe. It's gonna get hooked by that corner probably, but it's not, it's not too bad. Um, not sure if I've, I've never been told what, if there's a universal don't put it there or do put it there, if nobody's ever said in my hearing anyway. Uh, if an old guy like me pops up and says that's wrong, just move it around. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, it's more or less up to the assembler though. For us, that looks okay. Uh, we've got this meat around here holding it. Uh, we've got this gap at the back. Again, some places and depending on uh, situations with some of them like lubricant and all the rest may not want this open and may require that the shoulder is higher. Again, that's up to your individual shop, uh, of course. Let's leave it just open right now, a little tiny gap. Uh, and then we've only got one task left, which is filleting. Almost done. We've got some problems here. Let's look at Orlov. The, oh, wrong way. look at these fillets. Keyway corner radii. 
our min and our max, we're at 0 0.16, 0 0.25. Showing them on this here, it's R. So the minimum it can be is 0 0.16, maximum is 0 0.25. This implies that one of these two numbers is actually the radius of the key usually. So let's use that 0.16, keep this one in our mind. 0.25 is a strange number. You might want to go to 0.3, but uh, again, that's the standard. Uh, the shortcut for fillet is, of course, F, and you can make a bunch of fillets at once. Let's try putting 0.16 to that. Uh, press Control or Command to get the preview turned off. Seems okay. Now let's add one here. We'll add a fillet around the edge, sorry, edge of the uh, key seat, and we'll make that 0.25. Does that work? Let's see if it does. Oh, there we go. No, ooh, we've got it backwards. Interesting. So we can just X these if we want, or we can kind of do a fast fiddle to get them around. So this one is not correct. Unselect that and then add to this guy 0.16, remove the key, we end up with 0.16, then we can add 0.25 to the key. Lost my entry there. Let's make sure that works. Have we got this right now? There we go. Smooth let it, let fusion smooth out the screen. That's more correct. Nice. Now that means we've got this point to five around. Could we also use it for free example the shaft? Yeah. This could be quite a bit bigger though, or a bit bigger. So depending on your local machinist, you might want to add something here. So for example, maybe this is yet another special size, maybe 0.4. Right, so it's entirely up to you and your local machinist what's going on. Let's say okay to that. We've got some fillets yet to go though. In here in the ring groove, we need to fillet this, but we need to let it sit. Uh, ideally, I've been told, the fillet that we get out of the shaft uh, side of this, the ring groove itself, centers the ring. We end up with a little tiny gap, potentially, uh, if it's not aligning correctly. Uh, but we, it's, this is ultra picky, but in a way you want to try and use the fillet to kind of jam the ring up against the face of this. Now, this is assuming everything is perfect, which it won't be, uh, but this gives us a little bit of leeway and in an ideal world, yeah, maybe. So let's see what fillet would do that. Again, not ultra. Uh, how do I pick this guy? Okay, maybe can I come around the back? Hold, click and hold. What's the face? 0 0.05, click to copy that. Go back into that fillet tool, fillet feature, sorry, add one. Make sure we're getting the right sides here. Don't pick the whole surface because then we'll also fill at this end, but just that 0 0.05. And then hold down control to get the other one. This is getting in the way. So let's hide the ring. Control or command. Should have two. 0 0.05. Now that is picky and ultra detailed. Like you may never do that, but we're on it now. So there we are. There's our fillet feature running everything smoothly. Again, there's no fillets up here on our place part. There may in fact be, but we'll leave that. Almost done. There's something missing, which I'm looking at. It's obviously the other side of this guy. So we've got this one here. 0.16. So we can see 
the size of that before we edit the feature. So we're going to be going on to the 0.16. And well, let us pick away. So no, we have to turn off the analysis for a moment. Control, there we go. There we go, the world's pickiest CAD model. That's a lot of work, um, but we've learned a lot here. Uh, keep in mind what's happened. Uh, the whole thing is being driven by standards. Um, which is more or less controlled by something strange there. It was just the, the cross hatching makes it look non level strange. Nice. Um, the, the whole thing has been driven by that size. I'm a little concerned about that. Is that straight or not? Let's see here. Angle zero, right, so that's fine. Yeah, strange, these cross hatches make it look unstraight, nice. Um, this whole thing is driven by a couple of things. Um, one, the Orlov, uh, that equation or for the width of the hub required based on the shaft diameter, given that a key is gonna be mounted in there, the key itself is standardized. So that format, that chart we're just looking at is also kind of standard. And when you go over to McMaster car, let's just have one last look in there. So here's our rule chain. Let's just get that part number. One last McMaster car. Let's have a look at the detail of that guy. And we can see here that we've got the outside diameter of the hub. Where is that? Hold on here. The hub is 40. So if we said 40 divided by 1.5, or divided by, divided by 1.5, 26 and a bit, that's where this 25 is coming from, more or less. Right? This is a preferred number that it's slightly less than that 1.5. So this 1.5 is in fact driving things. Let's look around here, other parts. This guy, 37, maximum shaft, 22, 34, looking for 30 here. Where did that one go? 31, <laughs> we're probably gonna jump across it. 29, <laughs> nice. So 29 should be around maximum diameter, 18, right? So this is now preferred down from 20, so that's about 19. So this does in fact work, it's strange, but this whole system, this whole shaft system thing, jig, wheeze, whatever you wanna call it, is actually ran, run by standards uh, and by hubs being sized correctly and assuming there's gonna be a key and all that sort of stuff. So as soon as we say we want 17 teeth and we've got a 20 millimeter shaft, which is entirely reasonable, um, we often have this. Uh, we The teeth might be controlled by the, the necessary output speed of a shaft uh, somewhere else with a chain drive and the loads might dictate a 20 millimeter shaft that dictates almost everything else. Uh, so this is entirely standardized. Uh, so shafts can look quite tra intimidating, transmission shafts. Uh, but just keep in mind as you're working through that it's a fairly logical, uh, rational uh, sort of effort. Uh, thanks for watching, very long video, sorry about that. Uh, the next video, We'll be building on this approach and we'll be guiding you through a, a much more uh, finished shaft. It will also be probably quite long necessarily, uh, but we won't have to go through in infinite detail all these things. Uh, we're just going to fly through. Uh, and there we go. Thanks for sticking with it.
See you in the next Long March video.